Hello. Hi, hi, hi. Thanks for joining us today. Yep, 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 yep. It's good to be here. How are you doing? Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. I oh, can you hear you. All no. right. Okay. okay. Hey, Idris is here. Hi, Idris. <laughs> hi, Hi, good to see you. Is your Tuesday? Yeah, I'm Tuesday? fine. What do you say? Is your Tuesday Tuesday? Oh my God. <laughs> it's meeting back to back, man. For oh, the here. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today. And thanks for taking out your time out of your very busy schedule <laughs> to join us here today. We are glad to have you here. And we are all here to learn from you. So we still have three more minutes, Grace, for folks to join. And then we start. Okay, okay, okay. All right, Jack. All right, Clement. Welcome, everyone. Can you introduce yourself in the chat box and tell us your name, what you do, and where you're joining us from? So, uh, I, Ujulari Abdulami, is a software developer from Lagos, Nigeria. So, welcome. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. All right. So, we just dive in while hopefully more people join us on the way. So um, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Oluwa Bamikemi. You all are, are, you know, you are allowed to call me Bami. And I'm the community manager for Tunga. And yes, I am host, I'm, I'm hosting this for tonight. It's already tonight because I know that in East Africa is like already seven past 7 p.m. So yeah, I'll be host for tonight. And I'm always your host anyways. So uh, I'm glad today to bring um, Idris. Uh, Idris Olubisi, well, for some for some of us, we call him our boss because literally is the boss. He's the Idon. If you have been hearing of Idon, yeah, Idris is. So yeah, Idris is uh, going to be speaking to us um, about JavaScript integration. Well, so sometimes back, I think a few weeks ago, I just like randomly asked the community members, oh, if you if you would like uh, have a JavaScript workshop on what kind of topic will you have it? And I think most of them are like um, going to the side of integration, some mention, um, other stuff I can't really remember right now. But then I think the integration part to, stood out and and we are here bringing Idris to talk about JavaScript and integration, how to streamline your, your workflow, right? And well, if anybody got my email, you will see that I, I was talking about you want to work smarter, you want to make your workflow smarter, right? And that is something we, we know that JavaScript integration is going to like do for us. So Idris here with us will be sharing uh, probably is well well of his knowledge. He will be sharing with us today um, how to streamline your JavaScript integration, right? So I just want to say a little thing about Idris before I give him the floor to do his own intro and also get started with um, this session. Okay, so Idris, why is my Sorry, for some weird reason, my my version decided to be low right now. Okay, so um, Idris is the founder of um, Web3 Africa, for most of us that know him. And uh, so apart from him being the founder, he's a skilled software engineer and a technical writer. Mm. This idol here has written a lot of technical articles that you might want to check out later, right? So, and with expertise in open source, blockchain, software products, and serverless technologies, he has contributed to Freecodecamp, authored various content for sessions, and 
session engineering publications and log rockets. And he is an ambassador of Angel Hack. He's currently the developer relations engineer at Accela. Yes, I pronounced it well this time. So yeah, it just is here to take us on streamlining your workflow with JavaScript integration tools. And <laughs> someone said Idris has what to take off the word in the community. Yes, he wants to take off the word <laughs> because he's doing a lot of stuff, right? So yeah, so with one welcome, please, in the chat, kindly just drop those clap emojis. Let's make welcome. Idris, you just is going to give us a little bit of or uh, uh, more in depth of who it is and what it does, and then it's just going to give us a dive dive in. If you have any question, kindly use either the chat box or you use the Q and A session. And if need be, you can just raise your hand, and Idris is going to take your question. So let's get to it. Hi, Idris. All right. <laughs> hi, um, hi everyone. Um, I'm super excited to be here once again. Um, thank you so much, um, Bami. I, um, I think this talk is like something I wish I had earlier in my career to understand um, some of the integration tools available um, leveraging JavaScript and also some of the things you could just do out of the box all in the name of JavaScript and uh, utilizing open source tools that help make life easier, right? So um, today I'll be talking about JavaScript integration tools and um, let me just proceed to share my screen in a second. Okay, 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 one second. All right, sorry, Bami, let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, I can. Okay, I think um, I'm supposed to share. So let me just stop share and share. Um, or this will just... Okay, anyways, I thought I'll be able to share only my tab, but you could see my browser, right? Yeah. Like I the entire see. browser. Yeah. All right, no problem. Let me just go on the slideshow. Okay. Um, yeah. Hi everyone. Once again, let's talk about integrating JavaScript. Uh sorry, JavaScript integration tools, right? That is available for you um to leverage on as a front-end developer, as a back-end developer. Uh, if you are also probably in the cloud space, you might find these tools useful, uh, especially when you want to integrate some of these things on the front end or back end and trying to deploy them um, to the cloud, right? So my name is Idris Olubisi. I am a developer relations engineer and a founder. So I have like a couple of questions to have to ask like all the attendees right here. So I would like you to just respond via the chat. I'm currently taking a look at it. So the first question is, um, do we have any front-end or back-end developer here? If yes, you can just respond your role. So if it's front-end, just say front-end. If it's back-end, say back-end. If it's DevOps, just indicate. I'll be taking a look at that. Uh, another one is, okay, let me just wait for a couple more for your responses. Okay, I can see front end, back end. That's interesting. Um, don't worry, no worries. Um, what we'll be going through today, we'll definitely be talking about things you should um, leverage on when building with JavaScript, or if you are planning or thinking of uh, start using JavaScript effectively. This tool um, is very. All of these tools I'll be mentioning is very important, and you should just um, watch closely, right? So another question is, have you ever used any JavaScript tools? If you have used any, you can mention them or you can just say yes or no, right? So that works too. If you have used JavaScript, um, just say yes or no. Okay, no. 
All right, interesting. Do I, I'll be telling you a couple of tools that you might have used and you didn't realize that somebody created this tool and it's reusable for you any day, anytime. Another one is how frequently do you love to use coding automation tools, right? Are you the type that love to do your thing yourself? Are you the type that love leveraging on uh, maybe libraries or frameworks to do your stuff? Please let me know. Um, I'm taking a look at the chart right now. So how frequently do you use it? Maybe, yes. Okay, I can see somebody say that I don't like libraries. Interesting. All right, cool. Let's get right into it, All right? So a uh, big background, I think um, Bami already mentioned a couple of things already. I am a developer relations engineer at Axela and also uh, a technical writer, creates content for publications like Fit Cool Camp, Section Engineering, to mention a few, Media Jams, Asmeet, by uh, Media Jams by Cloudinary, Asmeet, and Image Kit. And also, I create Web3 technical content for platforms like Ashnode, Log Rocket, Morales, and Alchemy, and sometimes Ifra, right? And also the founder of Web3 Africa, a developer down member, and a mentor, and back at Lake Ashiko, Africa. All right, enough about me. So first, let's start since I see someone mention, oh, maybe they haven't utilized JavaScript tools before. And I can also see perspective about liking framework or um, not liking to use um, libraries, right? So what is or what are JavaScript integration tools per se? So first, you need to understand that JavaScript integration tools can help developers write better code, right? And also helps you to de debug applications more easily and um, help you deploy this application more quickly. So for example, if you have your application, let me, I'll be mentioning like a couple of examples that you might have come across, or probably you've heard they exist, but you don't know how to use them, or you don't even think you've used them before. I'll mention that in a couple of um, slides now. Um, but right now, it, it's very important to understand that these tools that we're talking about help developers write better code. When they refer to us like better code, what are they talking about? They're talking about things like ESLint, things like formatting tools that help you format your tools, things that highlight like um, code snippet for you and all of those things, right? And also they help you deploy debug applications. So we have compilers that serves as debugging tools for you to debug your, your application while you are building. So you save time. And um, for example, if you find any logical error that is not programmatical error, uh, probably something you did not get syntax error for, or you do not get any error popping up on your terminal or your maybe VS code or your server, but it has to do with something that you need to debug. So these tools help you debug them more easily. So which means that you spend more time, uh, you, spend, you spend less time um, fixing or finding bug and you will be able to ship the application quickly, right? That's exactly what JavaScript integration tools is all about, right? Um, so why does it matter? Like, why do I need to use it in the first place? If there are tools that somebody have built, why don't I just proceed to build mine? Uh, probably I'll be able to do it better or, you know, for security reasons, I can have it on my project, right? Instead of having it publicly and um, all of those things, right? So there are a couple of things you should consider when it comes to um, leveraging JavaScript integration tools, right? The first one is, they help you simplify complex workflow, right? So you might be wondering what exactly are they helping me to simplify? For example, you have a, a we all know about this analogy about DRI, that's do not repeat yourself, right? So for example, you have a function that takes in a particular parameter and does the exact, like uh, maybe there's a particular arithmetic or a logic that needs to happen within that function and the function outputs something um, different, right? So you have that scenario for example, you are working with an admin dashboard and um, the same scenario happens for an admin, same scenario happens for a user, same scenario happens for uh, probably a super admin or 
any other role, right, within the application, right? And you want to ensure that you are getting like the same output and you don't want to keep like, if you have had me module, you have a user module, you don't want to keep repeating yourself. So you can leverage um, open source tools, write those things once and have it in one place, then you will utilize them everywhere. So utilization is quite different from implementation, right? Utilization could just be like importing that particular package and you are good to go, right? Number two here is that it enables effective, efficient development and develop and deployment process. Of course, now you it helps you simplify the workflow, which means that you spend less time trying to figure out how to do things well, trying to make the whole place, like the whole code um, way more cleaner and all of those things. But now, because this already simplified those workflow for you, you'll be able to build things efficiently and also faster. So not just building, but also building and shipping those things faster, right? Uh, another one here, it helps to enhance code organization, modularity, and also maintainability, right? If you have so many codes everywhere, you have things scattered all around, you have so many... Um, business logic integrated here, integrated there, and they are literally doing the same thing, but probably because they are not within the same module, right? So imagine you have a tool that could help you um, centralize that particular functionality somewhere, and all you just need to do is to call it all over and over again. And this is not even about um, just creating a module centralized somewhere. This is also you thinking about optimization, which leads me to the last point here which helps you to improve performance and the way things run. Um, if you are familiar with like how things work within code, you know that there are some processes that takes a lot of time and there are some processes that you would do if it's not well written or if it's not well abstracted, um, you end up having performance performance issue within the application, right? These are like things you should understand that um, you get out of the box leveraging JavaScript integration tools. Moving on, we have, uh, I, I want to like explain some of, I want to show you guys like some of the well-known tools that you might have come across and you know they exist, right? Probably you don't know where it is utilized or you might have used it before. And um, I would also go to like things that are really known right now, big applications that leverages those tools under the hood, right? For example, here we have Webpack, right? Webpack, basically what Webpack is, is, is a module bundler, right? For managing dependencies and assets. So if you have had issues managing dependencies, you know, dependencies is like uh, a big deal when it comes to building applications, especially leveraging JavaScript, um, like um, packages, building, with JavaScript, managing dependencies is always an headache, right? Because when you have a particular um, version that works for your application, and probably there is an improvement from the library, there is an improvement for the runtime environment, things are happening. Um, you want to ensure that this package is talking to this package, but because the version of a particular package in your application already changed, the other application that is interacting with that package or the other package that is interacting with the, 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 the one that um, the version in has changed might not be compatible with that package. So you need to find a way to manage your dependency in such a way that even if um, the package's version changes, it doesn't affect or break the application. Another thing that Webpack does for you is code sleeping, having like hot module replacement. And the example of all of these things are like the popular frameworks that we already know uh, and libraries like React.js, Angular, Vue.js, even WordPress and so on. They have they utilize Webpack under the hood to do, um, if you're familiar with React.js, you can see some sort of hot reloading that happens. Like you don't need to refresh your page when you are, um, when you are building, leveraging like probably create react app or building with react js you realize there are some things happening there are so many things actually happening behind the scene so you can only understand this if you have used have anyone tried to use um um react in your application without using create react app please let me know you can drop it in the chat section just say yes or no if you have used um react js without using create your app 
or if you are hearing this for the first time, uh, it's like no problem uh, because before create your app, React already exists, right? And people try to use it within their existing JavaScript application. So there's a lot of um, code sleeping, managing dependencies and all of that. Okay, someone said no. All right. So before now, before create React app, let me just use that as an example for you to understand why this particular tool is very important, right? Before React.js, before um, utilizing create React app, for example, if you want to create a new React app now, you use create React app, right? So before that particular create React app module that allows you to um, get like a, um, a structure for your React application or basic React application set up for you, right? The React already exists, right? It's the set of team that came up with the plan of building a create React app. And what were they trying to solve? Before they built the create React app itself, they, there's this issue of managing dependency, issue of configuring things for, the, for them to hot reload, you know, managing dependency, code sleeping, and all of those things that happen because now you have a lot of JavaScript everywhere and you're still trying to integrate React.js and which is a lot more JavaScript again, right? So what Webpack does, because by default, you're supposed to configure your Webpack, configure your things yourself to manage all of those things. Then Create React tab came in and they help you manage, like the, under the hood, when you use the command Create React tab, what they are doing is that they are getting the Webpack for you. They are getting all of these JavaScript tools, JavaScript um, snippet that you need, setting up your, JavaScript environment for the React application under the hood. So they basically leverage Webpack mostly for all of these things, right? Another one, another world well note tool here is Babel. If you heard about Babel, okay, I didn't say that. Emika mentioned um, yes, yes, years ago, right? You see how life become really easier now compared to then where you have to do all of those things, right? The way to do it yourself, more leveraging Webpack could help you achieve that easily. Another one here is Babel. Babel is a transpiler for converting modern JavaScript to older version. We can see ES6, we can see ES7, ES8, ES Next. You know, all of these, these are like version from JavaScript basically. And what they allow you to do is, you know, for example, there's always an upgrade. Things are evolving within the space. So the same thing happens to JavaScript. People are working, people are seeing, uh, are going through ways to improve what already exists, right? So in that case, what Babel does is that, for example, if you have, if you are utilizing ES6 and probably most browsers doesn't support ES6, or there's a particular browser that you are not aware of that doesn't really support ES6 for all of this um, within the browser engine itself. Then utilizing Babel help convert that modern JavaScript to older versions that those library understand, right? They also enable a cutting edge language features. So who uses this tool? Next.js uses Babel heavily. Um, so you can write whatsoever um, ES Next that you want to write, but under the hood, Next year, next year uses um, Babel to convert any code that is like any JavaScript, any modern JavaScript code to older versions that most browser browsers would understand, right? So we have um, Create React app also, like I mentioned earlier, also leverages Babel, Gatsby, TypeScript, and so many other um, examples, right? That leverages Babel, utilizes Babel as an integration tools for. <clears throat> compiling or transpiling modern JavaScript to older versions. Give me a moment, please. All right, so uh, moving on, another one here I wanted to talk about is ES Lit. I know most of us might have used this, or maybe if you're seeing it for the first time, no problem. ES Lint is basically a linting tool for identifying and fixing code quality issues, right? So you could set any standard. So by default, ESLint have, as an organization or as a tool, they have like coding standard. Right? Everyone know, knows coding standard here. And that would be um, integrated, that's by default integrated into ESLint. So it does understand 
coding standard, best practices, and all of that. So what it does is that when you write a, a code, it helps you with formatting issues, helps you highlight where you need to change or where you where the code might sometimes even help you fix your code, right? There are some cases where um, you just repeat things all over and you don't know. It helps highlight and tell you not to add like unnecessary um code references if they are not relevant or a necessary attrition it helps you introduce like depending on the setting if you want to spin up in an es lead tool within your application nowadays you have seen if you're using next.js they they have they give you the option to configure or they configure es lead by default if you're using react application or you're using um let's say um vjs or some other applications some other libraries or framework they already configured ESLint for you by default, or they tell you, they give you a prompt to accept ESLint to be configured when you're trying to use the command to create a project, right? That's maybe you're using create, um, net, create Nest app or create a VJS app, right? So that this is what ESLint does for you by default. So these are like typically um, the top three tools that you use every day and you might literally not have a idea about, about it. Sorry, give me a second. I don't know what's going on. All right. Yeah. So now we've talked about what JavaScript integration tools are and some well known JavaScript uh, integration tools. What about those ones that you don't probably know about, right? Or do we have any other ones aside this? These ones I've mentioned. Yes, we do have. Let's proceed. So, part of those tools, we have documentation software, we have test frameworks, we have tax runners, we have ID. So, documentation software here, um, if you have ever used uh, Docusaros or if you've ever used Gitbook or any of these documentation software, you realize that they leverage heavily on JavaScript. And if you check under the hood, they utilize a lot of integration tools behind the scene for you to spin up for, for that project to be up and running, right? Oh, sorry, I think uh, I'm hearing a background noise. So we have readme.io, we have, uh, okay, yeah, someone mentioned JS Docs, yeah, we have JS Docs, we have quite a lot of documentation tools that you can use. We check under the use, they heavily leverage on JavaScript. And if you check well, they are utilizing a lot of ready-made integration tools that help spin up or make the process seamless for you to be able to leverage that particular tool when building your own documentation platform, right? So another one is testing frameworks. We have tons of frameworks out there for testing. For example, you use uh, Mocha and Chai or uh, probably any other testing tools that you've ever used under the hood. If you try to check your node modules, try to check how they build those packages, you realize that they are leveraging tons of integration tools. So tax runner also, <clears throat> there are a lot of tax runner that happens maybe uh, your terminal or a lot of things. They, they have a couple of JavaScript integration tools they leverage on. So IDs here we have, if you're familiar with maybe VS Code, Sublime, um, which other one? JetBrain, Visual Studio. So in this case, I'm, I don't mean Visual Studio Code, I mean Visual Studio and um, other IDs, right? They have integration tools behind the scene they leverage on. So this might not be popular ones that you need to even know, might not be even really relevant to you or something that you can use on a day-to-day, -day. Uh, but they have these tools they leverage on. Most of them are even open source, they leverage on those tools to um, build the application, right? So <clears throat> proceeding, um, I, I don't just want to mention like an overview or like a category where you have those tools being used, right? So I decided to add um, an examples for everyone here to understand aside the popular ones and also the category where it's being used. So now let's talk about some of the examples that you might see. Right, we have rollups. It's a um, lightweight bundler for for tree shaking magic. Forget about all, all of those English. Uh, so, for example, if you have a lot of 
uh, packages within your application, you can use Rollup to bundle all of those packages or bundle all of those library within your application. And it gives you like lighter weight when deploying those applications. The same as uh, Parcel, we have Parcel, if you ever build like, if you ever, if you ever use like uh, maybe JavaScript on the front end, trying to use Banana JavaScript to write all your things using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, um, there are a lot of things that needs to be bundled, especially when you want to have, um, you want to ship those code to production, right? Parcel gives you that blazing fast zero configuration uh, ability for you to bundle all of those JavaScripts or bundle all, your, all of those files, right? So another one here is Snowpack, which is which does something similar, but in a kind of unique way. In this case, this is um, Lightning Fast Development Tool for building your um, modern application. So all of these tools are these are like a couple of examples that you could check out. Husky, if you've ever used Husky before, you know how powerful it is. What it does behind the scene is it just helps you <clears throat> to create a powerful Git hooks for seamless automation. Say, for example, you have about 10 on the team, you are working on a project, and everyone is working on a different branch, and you have a main branch, right? So you can configure OSCI to whenever someone wants to push from a different branch or maybe send a PR, you can configure OSCI to listen to that PR and then match the current changes from a main branch to that branch. So you might be thinking, why is this important? If you allow Git, just if you leverage Git to, to do that, which you can just send a PR and merge, right? There'll be a point where um, <clears throat> two people might work on the same file, which would cause like a Git conflict, right? And if care is not taken or if it's not identified properly, if this person pushes a change from one particular branch, and this person also push another change from another branch. If the PR gets merged, the second person PR might overwrite the first person changes, right? So this person's change has been merged and it's on the main branch, but when this person um, send his or her PR, it gets merged to the same branch. It might as well overwrite the changes the, the first person has already made. So we've seen cases like that. So that's why this tool is very, very powerful. You can configure it in such a way that whenever a PR is made and um, somebody else wants to send a PR, it will help you pull the latest changes from Git. This is not even leveraging Git's pool, no. It will help you pull it, especially when it's a remote branch, right? To help you pull those changes and make sure that it doesn't, um, there is no conflict to what is pulling. So that way, even if there's a conflict, the person I want to send PR would fix it before he or she would send that PR um, or publish that PR for review, right? Excuse me. So another one here is Lighthouse for auditing and optimizing web performance. It also a great example of JavaScript integration too. So you can find Lighthouse on your Chrome where if you click to inspect, where it shows the console log, you can see the option to use Lighthouse. So it's a great way, it's an optimization tool, it's a JavaScript integration tool example that helps you test the web performance of that your site. It helps you audit the traffic, audit, um, not the traffic, sorry, help you audit the, the performance of the page, the optimization, your SEO, um, PWA, and other things, right? Another one here is Instable. This is a code coverage analysis for JavaScript application. So if you ever write tests and you want to understand how you are able to cover like the code coverage of your um, the test that you wrote, you can utilize this tool to um, as a code coverage analysis for for your application. So we have lots more examples. I just want to show you guys way more so that you understand that. JavaScript integration tools generally uh, is something very important and it's something really, really useful. We have Vite. This is also a web uh, a web development tool um, that helps you, you know, build your application or you can leverage to build your application. So one thing where, where Vite, Vite have a lot of use cases, right? But recently people have been complaining about Create React have been very slow, right? So now you can leverage Vite. I think it's Create Vite Hub or something, or Vite Create React Hub. I can't really remember um, the syntax, but there are um, specific syntax that leverages Vite now to ship 
uh, to create that code sample that you normally get with uh, create React app very fast now. So we have prettier also somewhat for um, code formatting, consistent styling and all of that. We have Pupeta headless browser automation for testing and scripting, right? So you might have, you might not see Pupeta like on a day to day, unless you are, you've ever tried to script an application, an existing platform, maybe to get some data or to get things they have on the data name. You see how powerful Pupeta is, right? A headless browser that just simulate the process of browsing and help you crawl all the data on a particular site. So um, these are like the two last but not the least, which is Ramda, a functional programming library for JavaScript that you can leverage. And then we have the GraphQL code generator. So if you are a JavaScript developer and you've tried or you want to explore GraphQL, you are probably going to come across this GraphQL code generator. And what it does is to help you automate code generation from GraphQL schemas, right? So behind the scene, if you ever use GraphQL before, code generation behind the schema, you see that thing that comes with GraphQL well, where once you build and run your application locally, it helps you generate schema, right? That generation behind the scene, what is happening, they are leveraging a couple of integration tools to uh, understand what is happening in your code and then generate a schema for that particular, um, um, uh, what's it called, for that particular code or your application that you're building. So all of this process is automatic. It basically does automatically um, generate code from your schema, right? So uh, another use case here is, for example, if you have a schema set up, um, uh, you have a particular schema set up and how data needs to be stored, maybe in your database or anywhere. Uh, you can leverage this to, to generate a specific code, leveraging that particular schema. For example, if you have a schema that stores record of a car, so it could help you generate a code, maybe a CRUD activity on how to create um, a car information, how to update that information, how to delete information, or how to read information. So it helps you generate code automatically from schema. So this is also an example of tools that you can just utilize out of the box, right? <clears throat> so above all, we covered from what JavaScript integration tools are, the um, popular tools that you could find online, and also some additional JavaScript tools, and then moving on to um, JavaScript tools examples that you can um, check out, right, on your own. And there are way lot, a, a lot more, right? Um, I just wanted to you guys to understand some of these examples, some of the ones you might have used, or maybe hearing for the first time that you could check out to see how they work. All right, so what next after this whole discussion is time to build. So when you are building, you need to understand that um, that thing you're thinking right now, that you're finding hard to do, is somebody, somebody has already faced the same issue. And what you might just need to do is to check online to see if that existing tools to um that already that is already doing that that you can leverage. So one thing I do on my own is that most times when I'm thinking something in my head, I just try to write the same thing in Google just to see if somebody already um went through the same thing and probably they found a solution or somebody created a package or somebody created um or give a snippet that can be reusable and all of those things. So building is only is the only way you can best leverage all of these tools that I mentioned. If you don't build, or if you build and try to neglect, or maybe just build based on what you know, um, I would advise you check out things on in Google or check things online to understand if there are existing tools that are already doing what you plan to do. So it just makes your work easier and faster and help you ship faster ship faster like you know it takes a lot for you to be able to ship faster and um you should be able to relate if you always have like um project manager standing on your neck to say hey uh, what's your update and all of those things right so it's important you you consider time when shipping even though you want to learn you want to experience how to do things from scratch but it's very important to understand that um not just doing things from scratch but also shipping things that are quality this 
integration tools that I mentioned could help you achieve that because those things that could stay set as a standard might have already been discussed when they build those packets. So they already factored all of those things into it. Sometimes security, sometimes code standards, sometimes optimization, sometimes performance, they already shift that in. So all you just need to do is leverage the tool and you are good to go. Yeah, so that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for joining. I, I love feedback and I would love to hear you. Um, and this is this will take you less than one minute for you to scan this QR code and um, give me feedback on what you think about the presentation. And um, you can also find me uh, everywhere as Alan Esot, my username, and I'll be happy to connect with you guys. Thank you very much. Oh, 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 yeah, thank you very much. Um, it is just this minute. Let me also scan the QR code. You, you said we should scan the QR code and you took it away. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That was a mistake. <laughs> All right. Okay, give me so a second, thank give me a second to come in. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining today. And thank you very much, Idris, for that wonderful presentation. I am not so much of um a JavaScript person, so <laughs> but I was able to like understood what you said or follow through with what you said. And I'm sure a lot of people here that, that are like JavaScript scripts folk are going to like get uh, one or two things to take home, right? So thank you very, very much for that wonderful um, presentation. I'm All going. right, you're welcome. I'm scanning this right now. Thank you. So please, if you are here, we have about, yeah, we have uh, less than 15 minutes. If you have any question for Idris, you can just like shoot right now. Any question? Yes, uh, Daniel Okobia from Lagos, Nigeria. Hi. A JavaScript front end developer. All right. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Idris, for the presentation. Yeah, it was a great welcome. one. And mm -hmm. um, it's a timely one for me because ES Lint has been my nightmare. Oh, okay. Yes. ES Lint, it throws a lot of, a lot of, uh, um, uh, what will I say? And then uh, limiters like blockers. And what I just do is I override and override. And then at the end of the day, I got a lot of commented out conditions like disabled. So the question now is this, do I ship such code with commented out uh, rules to production or what do I do uh, with oh. the PM on, on, on me? Thank you. All right. I think that's a very good question because I also experienced the same thing the first time I I was using ESLint. And the crazy thing is that uh, it was a good project. So they let me to figure it out on my own because everyone had ESLint configured. I think they are already familiar with it. So one thing I would advise or what I did personally is to go to ESLint documentation or just check out ESLint um how to configure ESLint for javascript project on youtube right you see a couple of tutorials um that tell you how to configure your code properly sometimes it's not because um you are not doing the right thing but it's because um you know ESLint is configured to use international coding standard like the general coding standard so if you are not writing something that matches that then to highlight it. But sometimes um, it's just suggesting, it's not like an error, it's just a warning, but you are going to see everything as red, 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 red. Especially when you have a, a very high contrast theme, you see everywhere red, 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 like red lines. So what I would advise or what I did personally for me to understand, I didn't really consider my code. I left my code then tried to understand what ESLint is and how to configure it properly, right? So instead of you commenting out, it could just mean that you need to go to the ESLint config and specify that you don't want this rule, right? So it won't flag it within your application. So I, I would just advise you to take out some time, 
check out the ESLIN documentation or check, preferably just check a video, right? Sometimes you get in a video, you'll be able to get insights on why things are happening, not just reading from documentation and try to take in all of this information. But when you listen to one or two videos, at least you'll be able to get how to configure the ESLint properly and also some of the errors that you get, how to read those errors and fix the um, the code, right? Uh, another thing you can use is if you have access to Copilot, right? Um, <clears throat> Code pilot would also before when you try to write your function, code pilot will suggest or predict what you're trying to do for you. So even though code pilot is trained on you know public codes and sometimes it might not be correct, but like it might not be correct, but you are likely going to get uh, all the information you need from what the suggestion looks like, and that would guide the way you write your code for you to have way less error from ESLint. I hope that answers your question. Excellent. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Huh? Thank you. You're welcome. So should in case you have like any other help or you need you still need clarity or questions, you can always reach out to me via Twitter. All right, okay. we'll do. Yeah, back to you, Bami. All right. Thank you very much, um, Idris. And thanks again, Daniel, for that question. Okay. Uche is raising his hand. Uche, you can unmute. All right. Hey, Idris, what's up? Good evening, everybody. Yeah, good um, I really don't have any question. I just wanted to highlight you from Wealth. We worked on, we were together in a team, Get Wealth, if you remember last year. Oh, interesting. So, <laughs> who is speaking? Uche, Uche. Uche, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to hear from yeah. you again. Yeah, so I saw your stuff and I decided to let me, say, let me join, you know, just to... Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. All right, no All right, thank you. Have a good one, okay? Yeah, thank you. All right. <laughs> thank you, Uche. Special shout out to Idris. <laughs> yeah. So is there any other question before we like wrap this up? Okay. So I'll take that as a no. No question in the chat too. Mm -hmm. All right. So great presentation. Thank you very much. Um, Idris, thanks for taking out your time. I think the, the session was well explanatory. And hello. Much, <laughs> but as well. okay, James. Hi, James. Yeah. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. good afternoon. Yeah. Okay. So I'm James, and I speak from Liberia. Oh, interesting. Oh, good to have you, James. Yeah. Okay. So it was a it was a great section, and I really got to understand from you more on the, the JavaScript aspect, and then that of the git yeah so at least it was clear enough to me about how people push their commit and all of that to so the github yeah and i appreciate the session it was great enough and uh, the time spent there was so much wonderful thank you right. thank you for the feedback thank you very much thank you hope to see you in the next um session next month uh, during the Tunga Axon Expert Tuesday. So thank you everyone for joining. Once again, this is Tunga Axon Expert Tuesday and it's the, like a monthly um, virtual event organized by Tunga community. And uh, what does Tunga do? Okay, Tunga is, uh, we connect Africa tech talent with international markets. That's just like a very layman. So you can please go ahead to our website at tunga.hiho to get more information uh, about how to join us. And if you want to like connect with us on all our social media platform, we are tunga underscore hiho on Twitter and tunga.io on Instagram and tunga.io on, on LinkedIn. Kindly check us out and please you can 
click on the follow button and subscribe button on our YouTube page. This uh, particular session will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So you can, if you want to have a re, uh, rewatch of it or you want to share with uh, a colleague that you think this might be helpful to, our YouTube page, sunga.io to get the recording. Okay, thank you again, one, uh, everyone for joining. And I'll be looking forward to seeing you all. Kindly follow um, Idris, Ola, Ola Netsoft, for the varieties. <laughs> I'm sure you have any questions. This DM is always open to answer your questions. And till we meet again next time. Yeah, it was really informative. Thank you very much, Christian. So see you all next time. Have a lovely Tuesday. Enjoy yeah. the rest. Bye. Bye.